this week on the Way Life Center's Love Stream broadcast. Anybody that knows me know that I'm a person that thinks outside the box. I, I'm, I'm just that way. I and you may say the sky is green, I may say the sky is blue. You may say that it's sunny, I'm gonna say it's partly cloudy. You may say the grass is green, I may say it's got bugs and weeds. What are you saying, Carrie? There's always a different perspective on something, but most people will not speak their perspective because they're too afraid of being ostracized or looked down upon, but God has actually given you a brain, a mind to see things differently so that you can help implement change. Blessings and abundance. Welcome, 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 welcome to the Way Life Center's Sunday morning love stream broadcast with yours truly, Apostle Kerry Pope. I'm excited to be with you this morning. And guess what, guys? It is almost Christmas. We've almost made it to the end of another year. 2020 has been a trying year. And as much as we have seen things happen and people die through COVID and loved ones that we've lost, we are yet still here giving God the praise because 2021 still holds the promises that God has made to me and to you. So listen, Rebecca and I have taken the rest of the year off, but we're bringing you videos from earlier this year, content that'll bless your heart. Today's message is titled, You Are a genius. Many of you may not feel like it. You may feel as though other people are ahead of you. But I want you to know something. God has something great that only you can do because you are a genius. So sit back, get your pen and paper, call someone, tell them to tune in to the Way Life Center Sunday Morning Love Stream broadcast right now and let this word bless your heart. I'll be back at the end of the service to give you a few more words, raise an offering, and bless your heart. Until then, enjoy. God bless. So let me kind of give you a little background on what the Amplified Mind is all about, okay? And the only way to really do that is to simply explain what does it mean to be amplified. If it's called the Amplified Mind, and the whole meaning is to amplify you to another wavelength so that you can start thinking like God and speaking those things that are not as though they were, we got to know what it means to amplify, right? So first of all, to, when we look at the word amplify, it is defined as to make larger, greater, and stronger, to enlarge, to extend, to expand in stating or describing. So what this amplified mind is about is stretching you outside of your comfort zone, causing you to implement critical thinking, causing you to look at things from a different perspective, and not just settling with, that's all I know. How many of you know it's time out for that excuse? Nobody ever taught me. This is all I know. My question is, do you really want to learn? Because the amplified mind is about just that. Enlarging your territory. Enlarging your mind to see things from a different perspective. If I could put it another way, for the scales to fall from your eyes. And you begin to analyze things with critical thinking and looking at things from a different set of eyes or perspective, all right? So if I'm talking about amplifying you, or amplifying your mind, I am going to help you to understand what it means to think and see into the invisible realm and to see things and see the solution to a problem. And then with words you speak because you have amplified your mind and you see it differently, you'll begin to speak things clearly and differently and it will help people to understand a better way, all right? So when we think about geniuses, you know, we think about people who are masters on the SAT. When we think about a genius, we think about somebody who's a great inventor, who's super smart. But the reality is the geniuses have about them a certain principle or concept. And I believe that many of you watching me have that same concept that you don't just, uh, how can I put it like this? How many of you, this is a good answer, question. How many of you just go along to get along? You hear somebody's idea or they say something to you and you just go along to get along, but really you don't agree with it because there is another way. There's a better way. So instead of rocking the boat, 
You just go along to get along. And in doing that, it's really not helping, but it's actually hurting. Let me, let me tell you why I say it's actually hurting. Because if you really share what you see and how you see it, I don't care how different it is. That's what God is calling for in this day. I'm looking for somebody who's not afraid to speak something different that will shine a light on an area that is dark so that people that will stop wondering or consider things mystery and get answers. You know, I love the word of God. It tells us if you desire any wisdom, ask for it. And God will give it to us graciously. And what I'm learning is it's okay to see things differently. Anybody that knows me know that I'm a person that thinks outside the box. I, I'm, I'm just that way. I, you may say the sky is green. I may say the sky is blue. You may say that it's sunny. I'm going to say it's partly cloudy. You may say the grass is green. I may say it's got bugs and weeds. What are you saying, Carrie? There's always a different perspective on something, but most people will not speak their perspective because they're too afraid of being ostracized or looked down upon. But God has actually given you a brain, a mind to see things differently so that you can help implement change. How many of you know that we're in a time right now where things are changing and they're changing quickly? So if they're changing quickly, God is wanting me to be a part of that change. But here's the problem, and I had to learn this because one of my problems was I felt like if I spoke something differently, oh, he's go he always got to be the one. Oh, he's the person over there that can't see it like everybody else. Or in the spiritual realm, people say oh, he's being used by the devil. No, what God is saying is I'm calling for those who are not afraid to speak and see things from a different perspective and bring more clarity to a cloudy picture. If everybody's going one direction, I'm going to tell you something that's funny. If you ask people that are running, if you just walk around the corner, there's a whole herd of people running to the right or to the left in a one unison direction, you're going to go, oh my God, something must be going on because they're running and they're frantic. And so I'm just going to run too and I'll ask questions later. That mindset has to change because sometimes people are running because it seems like the right thing to do. And then when you get to where you're going, you find out that you're running from nothing but the truth. Sometimes it takes somebody who's not afraid to go against the grain to say, okay, I hear the concept, but have you ever considered this? Have you ever looked from it this perspective? So let me share this with you. We have to come to look at geniuses as people who are operating on a higher mental capacity, who in reality, they're no different than you and I. They're no, a genius is no different than us. What it is is this. The person stepped out on what they believed. They implemented what they heard in their spirit and in their soul, and it caught like wildfire, it took off like wildfire and implemented change. What would this world be like if Bill Gates had stayed in college and never dropped out when he knew that his purpose was really Microsoft? And I don't need a school to teach me what I already know because what I already know was not given to be my man, but implemented by God because I'm a genius because God has implemented this in my mind. Steve Jobs, who had he not followed his heart and really was a genius and, and, and he was a, he, he ruffled a lot of feathers because he had the vision and the idea of how to create the iOS software and bring about Apple. And they realized we can't do this without Steve Jobs because he's really the genius of the brains behind the brand. What are you saying, Carrie? Some of you watching me right now have great genius ideas, but you're too afraid to step out, so you just sit on them. And then a year go by, and another year go by, and 10 years go by, and you're calling other people geniuses, but never realize that you are one as well. Does anybody watching me right now feel like that really you are a genius, but because you don't like exposure or you don't like attention or you don't like to ruffle feathers, or you don't like to rough, uh, rock the boat, you just sit quietly and say, well, if they want to know my opinion, they'll ask it, and maybe I'll give it if I feel like it'll be received. See, geniuses don't worry about that because I'm not here to please you. I'm here to change the atmosphere. A genius changes the atmosphere. Can somebody type that on the screen? A genius changes the atmosphere. 
If you look into this world right now, you'll see many things that we use. The electricity. Thomas Edison was a genius. Held thousands of patents for things he created. But he's really known for the electricity. Every time you turn it on and uh, Graham Bell for the, for the tele, uh, telephone. And if you look at all the Fords and all the cars, these guys were geniuses. They didn't set out to change the world. They just set out to do what they saw the world needed. Ooh. That's good. Because when you set out to do what the world need, then you're not trying to change the world. You're just giving what God has given you to add. And with that being said, you may not know trigonometry. You may not know how to do the other things that others know how to do. But what you do know how to do is to be a genius in what God birthed you to do. And you're not trying to impress anybody because it just comes naturally. Hey, Apostle Miles, God bless you. Does anybody know that what you're doing flows naturally when, it's, when, you, when you're a genius? Some, most geniuses don't have an education to back up their, what they have. They're good. Some are good at numbers. Some are good at memory. Some are good at various things. But they're a genius in what they do. Watch this here. Geniuses look at problems in many different ways. When you are a genius and you're called into... Uh, let me tell, I'm just going to prophesy and tell you now. My wife and I was talking. And uh, she says, what is it exactly you feel like God is calling you to do? I said, baby, God has called me to speak to corporations. He's called me to be called into the CEO board meetings and to sit down and to listen to what their ideas are. And then they say, Carrie, what do you see? And then I speak to them based on what I'm hearing because I'm a genius in the office that I walk in, meaning able to sit down amongst kings and hear from God and speak to the atmosphere. See, church is outside of the four walls. I'm called to corporations to sit in CEO meetings, to get on a plane and to fly to Taiwan, to fly over here to Australia, to fly to California, to fly to Brazil and sit with the board members, sit with the CEOs of Fortune 500 companies. So you got to understand something. You got to stop thinking small. I don't know who I'm talking to tonight, but you have to stop thinking small. And so a genius looks at problems in different ways. Meaning when you're called to come in, you're not trying to impress because they're already impressed when they invited you to the table. I'll let, you, I'll let that sink in for a second. You're not coming to impress they were already impressed when they invited you to sit at the table. Your job is to come in and to look at the problem and see it from a different perspective. Watch this. So genius looks at problems in a different way. Genius often comes from finding a new perspective that no one else has taken. If you are going to walk in the true destiny that God has called you to be, you can either get in line and follow the leader or you can be the leader and bring about a new perspective. See, a genius sees a problem and he implements or she implements a new perspective. Not saying what everybody else is saying, not doing what everybody else is doing, but it's actually saying, I hear you, but have you considered this? And they'll say, I never looked at it from that perspective. Because a genius has the ability not to people please, but to people change. To change the minds of man and women to see it from a different perspective and to do things better. Oh my goodness. Leonardo da Vinci believed that to gain knowledge about the form of a problem, you begin by learning how to restructure it in many, many ways. So if this is how you solve a problem as a genius. You take that problem and you put it out in various formations. And you look at it from this perspective. You look at it from that perspective. You look at it from the under perspective. You look at it from the over perspective. And what he was simply saying is you reform the problem into another problem and so what you're doing is actually solving multiple problems with a new perspective. Because you looked at, if we do this, then it might work this way, but it's going to introduce another problem. Okay, so how do we address that problem? Well, a genius will say, we address it by doing it this way. Okay, well, it's going to introduce this problem. So what you're doing is you're actually 
listening to the spirit in your spirit, the spirit of God in your life, and you're giving them various perspectives, recreating it, restructuring it to look at it like a Rubik's Cube. You look at it from different sides. And if you don't know anything about a Rubik's Cube, there's what? One, two, three, six sides. If I remember correctly, six sides. And all sides have to evenly match for the cube to be solved. But when it's mixed up, the genius has to see a pattern. That's why they got to get this tonight. You have to see the pattern. And your mind says, okay, if I turn it this way, I've seen that pattern, so let's go this way. And in turning a different way, it brings about a new pattern that puts together the puzzle that you're solving. See, geniuses welcome solving problems. They don't run from problems. They welcome problems because they understand they were made for solving problems. You know, some of you say, I don't like problems. I don't want problems. I don't need problems. But problems always seem to find you. It's because you're a genius in the field of solving those problems. Listen, he felt this way that he would look at the problem and he wasn't biased towards. You know, you can't be biased. Now, I'm going to share something. If you're biased towards something, you're never going to solve a problem. If a genius is going to truly flow in who they are, they have to remove themselves from being biased of anything and how they normally see something. That's one reason why God is shifting the minds of people to see things from different perspectives when others say, but that's not how we do it. Prime example, many are struggling now just to focus and flow with the new service that we happen to do because of COVID-19. So worshiping from home or worshiping from, like I'm sitting in a studio now with lights and you got the camera people sitting in their home still going, you know, doing the news. I wanna share something with you real quick. Life goes on, baby. It doesn't stop because it's a COVID-19. What life does is look at the problem. They look, analyze how do we still do our job, but do it from a different perspective. Somebody should hear that right there. How do I still do my job, but from a different perspective? So this COVID-19 has caused us to have to shift and how we do things. People are scrambling for online ministry. People are scrambling to, re to work, work from home remotely. People are now doing home school and, and home education with their schooling now. Why? Because change forces you to look at a problem and reformulate it to what works. That's why I put a post up today saying that after this, uh, this pandemic, life would never be the same. It won't be the same simply because we will have changed our perspective of how we view things. Pollution is going down as a result. So things that we haven't seen in a while, Mount Everest, you have seen the pollution that's keeping it from being seen. Uh, the grass is a little greener. The birds are a little chirping a little bit more. A lot happens when things change. All right. So he felt... Uh, he felt the first way to look at a problem is to be biased towards his usual way of seeing things. He will reconstruct his problem by looking at it from one perspective and move to another perspective and still another. And with each move, his understanding would deepen and he would begin to understand the essence of the problem. So I didn't better hear this real clearly. The reason why we're not solving problems in our lives is because we're not understanding the essence of the problem. We're not. We're frustrated and flustered with the problem, but we're not understanding the essence of it. What is fueling this problem? What is causing this problem to be what it is, a problem? And when you step back and you allow the mind to be amplified and look at things from a different perspective, you don't have to go, go get in deep and all, just get still. And when you get quiet, confusion settles itself and clarity comes. Anybody ever noticed that? You ever just got frustrated, frustrated and said, where are my keys? Where are my keys? Where are my keys? But the keys were always in front of you, but you was too flustered to see the solution right there. So what are you saying, Kerry? God is trying to slow us down. Slow us down. Hey, baby, she said, I miss talks like this with your daddy. We're going to talk soon, baby. Talk to me tomorrow, all right? And with that being said, we had to start to understand what is the essence of the problem. So all of you that are geniuses, moving forward, when you encounter a problem, don't get frustrated. Take a moment, woosah, and say, God, show me the 
essence of this problem and show it to me from different perspectives so I don't become biased and try to handle it the way that I used to. Show me how to handle it from a different perspective. And what it does is it deepens your understanding of a thing. It deepens your concept of a thing. If, if we're lacking wisdom, and we are, we're lacking it because we're too busy trying to do it the way we've always done it. And God is saying, I'm trying to shift you into geniushood, but you're too busy trying to revert back to what? Compromise and confirmation or conforming. We have conformed to the point that to do what is a, what a genius would do doesn't feel right because nobody else is doing it. Uh, that's the first thing you should recognize. If nobody else is doing it and you're doing it, that's what a genius does. Okay, anybody enjoying this tonight? Is it helping you tremendously? I, I hope it is. Uh, Einstein's theory of relativity is this, in essence, a description of the interaction between different perspectives. Okay, it's, it, it is simply an interaction between different perspectives. You know what's funny is religious people can't sit down together and talk about the different perspectives. Because to do that brings about an argument of who God is greater than who's God, who's more anointed, who's more powerful. And God is sitting back going, you guys really don't get it. It's not even about how long you've been saved, how much power you have. It's not about how much degrees you have. It's not about how much no money you have in the bank. God is saying for my geniuses, geniuses will sit down together and look at things. Hey, Bonita, bless you, sweetheart. Look at things from various perspectives and watch this. I may not have an understanding that you can share with me that will sharpen what I was wondering. And somebody else, that's why it's good to talk to people that you, uh, start talking to people that know the same thing you know. Start talking to people that see things from a different perspective so it can deepen your understanding of how and, and really how God operates. If I can be really honest with you, stop saying that's of the devil. And unless, unless you have a Christian faith, we haven't. What does light and darkness have fellowship together? What does dumb and smart have fellowship together? That's still light and darkness. Come on, let's be real about it. I'm not saying you're dumb, but you're dumb if you don't sit down with somebody else who's different from you to understand why are we different? Because if God is God, then why are we different if we got the same daddy? I'll pause for the cause. If we are truly serving the same God, then maybe the Buddhists can share something with me about how they view God that I never understood. Or if I sit out and talk to someone from uh, one of the Muslims, they can share with me how they feel so, so solid about, uh, about, about Prophet Muhammad that maybe I can learn something. And they'll sit with me and learn about Christ and they can understand the perspective of how they feel. It, but we don't do that. We've been taught to disperse from each other, don't talk to each other, and it leaves us dumb and really speaking things that are not true because we lack the understanding. But geniuses will say, I can sit in a room with a Buddhist, an atheist. I can sit down with an atheist and ask them, why do you feel like God is not real? Because it helps sharpen and deepen you to solve problems in the future if you meet another atheist. Right? So let's keep going. Uh, Sigma Freud. Analytical methods were designed to find details that did not fit with traditional perspectives. Listen, in order to find a new completely point of view. That's what's wrong now. People are locked into tradition ways of thinking, traditional ways of doing, that they, they that to welcome something new is a cult. It is not a cult, baby. This has just been going on for the reason why Jesus was so powerful is what he was saying was different from what was being said. He brought a new perspective to, to, to the world. And when he would talk to people, they said, now I hear what he's saying, but what he's saying makes sense. But good God is different from what we heard. The same with a genius. A genius will sit down and educate you on something they know, and they won't be afraid to say what they feel and what they know. Because you know why? They're not going to fit in. Hey, Lanita, they're not going to fit in. A genius is not going to fit in with an average person because the knowledge they have is something that you haven't heard and they're going to share some knowledge with you that's going to make you think. That's what's wrong with people today. We don't like to think. To think holds me accountable. So we have to study to show ourselves approved. So a genius, Sigmund Freud said, analytical methods were designed to find details that did not fit tradition. 
You know, anything, people, when, when you do something that's not part of tradition, you get ostracized because you're bringing chaos. I'm not bringing chaos. People don't bring chaos when they're different. They bring a greater understanding to things that some people call mysteries. And sometimes if you just learn to sit down and listen, this will blow your mind talking to people that, let me tell you something, these young cats today got some knowledge that'll mess you up. If you just sit and listen. When's the last time we just sat and listened? Not out talked them, not out debated them, but simply sat down with someone else who had a different perspective and listen. Because, listen, we are so animate about wanting people to come and worship our God or work in my job or be part of my group. But why does it always be part of mine? Can't they be just as animate about theirs? And they want you to be a part. So if you believe in something, you want to share it. But a genius will not take down from what he or she believes because they're going to share something based on the study they've gotten and based on what God has given them to do. Let's keep going. God has placed inside of all of us the ability to think. Much of current problems that we are facing have been taught to us, and because we haven't probably been taught how to think, we run to other people asking their opinions of what they think when God has actually given you the ability to think for yourself. Who better to solve your own problem than you? Because they don't know how you feel. They don't know how you perceive. They don't know how you conceive things. So what they'll do is say, I think you should do this. And because you don't know how to properly think or see it from different perspectives, you trust what they say versus follow how you feel. Now, I want you to keep sharing this tonight. This is a good stuff. I'm amplifying your mind. I'm taking you to another level frequency-wise to think. Because here's the problem. How can we change if we don't change how we think? Okay? How can we change if we don't change how we think? Instead of putting it in the mental energy that comes with thinking, many settle for having someone do the thinking for them and they follow the plans that they recommend. See, when you come talk to me, and, I'm, I'm, and I'm, I'm a, if, you, if you're a client of mine and I'm talking to you, I always teach this. The answer to your questions lie inside of you. My job as a genius, as a genius counsel in this case, is to help you come to the resolution that is already residing inside of you. Not to give you the answers, but help you come to the answers that have always been waiting on you to recognize them. See, that's how a genius operates. They allow you. See, I'm all about empowering you. Not guiding you. I told someone something today, and I'm going to say something, and I want you to hear this because it's going to take an amplified mind to get it. If you're on a regular frequency, you're going to miss it. But if your mind is amplified, you'll get it. I said today about Jesus, since everybody says, you know, the Christians believe that Jesus is Messiah. We're going to celebrate him this weekend. The Jewish community, uh, Judaism, believes that Jesus was a prophet called by God, but he is not the Messiah. Fast forward, Islam looks at Jesus and say, Jesus is a great prophet, but he's not the Messiah. So you got two that says he's not, one in the middle says he's is, that he is. So what I said to someone is, what I know is this, we don't know if he was or wasn't. We believe it, but we were not there. But based on what we read in the scriptures is this, Jesus was always about empowering people to believe in themselves and to what? Heal themselves, he told the one. He told the lady with the issue of blood, it's your faith that has made you whole. He told one of them, take up your cross. He would tell people, take up your bed. He told the, the man, the cripple man, take up your bed. He was about, and he, Jesus was about empowering people to believe in themselves and to see things from a different perspective that I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. I can because what this man said to me awaken my abilities. So what are you saying, Carrie? When you look at things from an amplified mind in a different way, you won't be so consumed about Jesus' miracles, then you're more consumed about him empowering you to be the miracle. You'll learn how to stand up and say what thus said God and not to quote the scripture because you're speaking from the genius inside of you or the spirit of God inside of you. All right? I'm not going to get deep on that, but I'm going to go somewhere else with this. 
Catch this real quick. The mind of a genius doesn't settle with the current status quo. Okay? You got to get that. The mind of a genius does not settle with the current status quo. A genius cannot just sit back and do nothing. That's one reason why I get in trouble so much. I just can't sit back and go along with things because that's what we're doing. But God has called me to speak those things that he's given me. And yes, they're going to be different. But if you stop and listen to what I'm telling you and learn what I'm teaching you and actually go back and process and listen, you'll it, it's like something's going to go. It's kind of like this light. It's like the light will be off and you're going, oh, forget him. What he said is not true. And all of a sudden one day, the light's going to come on. And you're going to be like, wait a minute. What Pope says makes so much sense right now. Because why? My mind is thinking on higher amp, uh, amps, higher amps, and I'm thinking differently. So the mind of a genius doesn't settle for the current status quo, but their minds are geared to analyze the current problems or situations. And they abandon the initial approach that stems from past experiences. A genius is not worried about the failures he's experienced or she's experienced. A genius understands that this idea that God has given is going to work. Can I do something too soon? You sure can. That's a time and a season and a purpose to everything. And when you're done, hey, Amari, when you learn how to hear from God and to flow into time, when a genius understands it's my time, he doesn't care how many followers he has. I want to talk to somebody real quickly, and you got to hear this. God said to tell you to stop worrying about how many, how many people are following you and just simply do what I call you to do. If you think about it, People with a lot of followers are not necessarily doing what God called them to do. They just may be good at what they're doing. A genius would understand that I don't have to have followers to be successful. I just have to be successful in what God called me to do. And when I do what God called me to do, I don't have to have a bunch of likes. I have a bunch of followers. I have a bunch of friends. I just need to make sure I'm connected with the one that's in feeding my mind with the fresh data from heaven so that I can do what he's called me to do and share what he's called me to share. That has to be your mindset. How many of you out there in the audience right now feel that you have genius running through your blood? That you know that there's something that God has called you to do, but you have a fear inside of you to do it. That's why this is called the mind of a genius. You have to be able to stop and say, wait a minute. I'm not trying to do what Cheryl's doing or Teresa's doing or Omari's doing. I'm doing what Carrie's called to do because if I stay in my field, watch this, or stay in my lane, and if I do what I was called to do and say what he told me to say, then I'll bring change or bring light to a dark world. And I'm doing it because of what? I am being a genius to what God called me to be. Now, if you want to talk about something else that's not my field, I can't go there with you because that's not what I'm a genius in. But bringing about change, implementing change, empowering you, changing your mind to see things from different perspectives, that's what I'm called to do. And as long as I stay in that lane, I'm good to go. Now, I want somebody to hear that because you can't be everything to everybody. That's how people get in trouble. All right? A genius understands that they are not giving the fix-all solution for every problem. You understand. I can't help you, but I can refer you to somebody that can. Stop feeling like you got to be everything to everybody. Sabrina says, doing what I was called to do. I'm a genius, girl. You better say it. When a genius understands that they're not giving the solution to the world's problem, but the problem that they are to, to uh, give a solution to can be the problem that the world is dealing with. You got to hear that. See, if that problem right now, the COVID-19, let's say God gave you the solution and you share it with somebody. Now you're a genius. Oh, my God. All of the scientists in the world couldn't even come up with this because it was for you to come up with. Now you listen, but does that make you a scientific um, uh, nuclear reactor study person? No, it just meant that for the COVID-19, God gave you the insight to share how to heal it. What we have to understand is this, never allow people, and I hear God saying this clearly, never allow people to pull you into an arena that you were not called to be in. Never allow people to put you in a game that God never signed you up for. Because when you do that, you're going to look like a fool and not a genius. All right? The mind of a genius understands that I'm not everything to everybody, but what I am is what I am. 
And that's what I'm called to be, what God destined me to be. Hey, Kim, how you doing, sweetheart? And so with that being said, they are called to operate for specific callings and purposes. So when you're called, like I said earlier, when I'm called to, sh to come into a board meeting at a Fortune 500 company, I'm not coming in to look at their stocks and bonds. I'm not called to come in to look at their employment uh, do's and don'ts. I'm called to come in and fix one problem. You got to hear this. Somebody said something today that I thought was very profound. The gentleman said, I've learned to look at a problem one step at a time. Somebody better hear this. I've learned to look at a problem one step at a time. A machine is broken. Question is, what's broken? The gears are broken. Question, where are the gears? The gears are right here. What does the gears operate? They operate the motor. All right, so if it's tore up, that means that the motor is fine, the apparatus is fine, the gears have the problem, so let's focus on the problem and the other stuff takes care of itself. See, if Jesus is not trying to dissect everything, he's just called to fix the problem. What's smart about a car is when the light comes on, if you pay attention to the code, the code tells you what's wrong with the car. That's why you plug the car up and they tell you the code. And you fix the problem. A genius understands simply that I'm operating in my specific purpose and my calling. No more than that. I don't need to sit on your panel if that's not part of what I do. I don't need to come to your functioning if that's not what part of what I do. I Somebody said, why don't you do private counseling? Well, I've done that. But what God is calling me now as a genius is to sit at the head of the table with the board members, with the CEOs, and to speak to them collectively. And if I, listen, listen now, you got to get this. And if when I solve the problems with the head, the rest flows to the body. Hmm. See, I'm not trying to chase and fix the body. I want to help fix the head. Because if you fix the head, they'll reward you when the rest of the body. Think about it. Fly into California. Hey, Miss Beck, sit down at uh, uh, one of the studios there in California and talk about a current problem they're having that they're trying to solve. And they say, Kerry, this is what we're dealing with. How do you view it? And I began to look at it as I talked earlier from various perspectives. And then they say, we love the idea. We got the solution. And they cut me a check for $25,000. Guess what? I'm gone. I'm not sitting there to help them implement it because that's not my job. My job is to help you find the problem, fix the problem with a solution, and then it's your job to implement the problem. To implement the solution, excuse me, to the problem. When you understand that, that means you're not trying to do everything as some people are trying to do today and get burned out. What's my time? All right, let me hurry up. Let me hurry up. All right, so this, you're going to love this. By not selling with one perspective, catch the geniuses, by not selling with one's perspective, Geniuses do not merely solve existing problems, but in their analyzing, they also identify new ones. What are you saying, Carrie? As a genius, you're going to identify new problems while you're analyzing current problems. It's just what's going to happen. You're going to have an eye to see things that others don't see. That's why God is calling you to stand and say the things that are problems that will actually reveal other problems. You can't be afraid to speak. You can't be afraid to share the knowledge that you have. When your mind has been amplified, you can't help but see things on a different perspective. I'm that kind of guy that when I walk in the room, I'm seeing things that others not seeing and I'm hearing things that others not hearing because I'm called to that higher frequency because my job is not to get along, to, get to, to go along to get along, but to say, can I talk to you? Okay, I saw this, I saw that. What about this? What about that? Have you thought about this? Because what God is saying, and here this genius is, I'm bringing in a new set of eyes and ears to reveal problems that others can't see because they've been in it too long. That's some revelation right there for you. I'm calling new eyes and ears into current situations because they're bringing in a different perspective and a different view. And they'll be able to analyze the problems that have been there all the time. But because those people have been in it so long, they become part of the problem. You got it? Good. So I'm going to close with this. I'm going to close with this. I remember watching the movie World War Z. World War Z with Brad Pitt. Love that movie. I don't know if you've seen it. 
And in this movie, there it talked about when it was in, um, uh, I think it was Israelis in, in Israel. They would, uh, yeah, in Israel. And the man was talking about the tenth man. That I was the tenth man. I don't know if you guys remember that part. And so I was like, and, and he said, well, the tenth man, he says, I'm the person who is supposed to be the loyal dissenter. I'm not supposed to get along with what they're saying. If all nine agree, it's my job to disagree and to give them a different perspective. Let me read this to you. The concept of the noted, the concept noted in the 10th man rule is this. The 10th man discipline is one where the group initially appoints at least one person to serve as a lawyer to center. And the center is one who disagrees in a matter of opinion, beliefs, or etc. So they would hire one person and set them in the midst of the other nine. And their job is to hear what everybody is saying and play the role of the devil's advocate and say, I hear you, but I don't agree. And then tell them why he doesn't agree or she doesn't agree. If that was to happen right now for you and you were to tell people, no, I hear you, but I don't agree, they'll throw you out. They'll throw you out of the organization. They'll throw you out of the country club. They'll throw you out of the group because you are just stirring up trouble. We need trouble stirrers today. Oh, somebody didn't like that. We need trouble stirrers. We need people that doesn't just go along because it sounds good, but to say, but hold on, it all's good. But we didn't consider this. So uh, it says the 10th man rule is a means of counteracting our human nature that prefers harmony within our circles. You hear that? The 10th man rule means it's a means of countering our human nature that prefers harmony within our inner circles. In other words, I'm not here to make you feel good or be your amen. I'm here to show and shine light as an interjection into, well, I don't think that's a good idea. We actually need that as a genius. And we, we actually need that, to be honest with you, in our churches. We need that on our boards. We need that in our groups. We need to appoint somebody who's loyal now to the group, but they know their job is to look at it from a different perspective. And we don't have that because the person that looks at it differently, they're afraid that the spoiled apple, the, the spoiled apple is going to ruin the bunch. So they throw the apple out. And that actual apple you throwing away is actually the one that's going to help implement change. Somebody needs to hear this. That apple is actually going to help implement change. And so the 10th man rule, which is so important, it means appoint one person who will be the different maker by seeing things differently and they speak it to help us come to a collective understanding with all areas viewed. All right. So the mind of a genius is just that you're able to speak things into areas and bring light into darkness. How many of you as I close feel like that you are a genius and listening to this message, you began to understand that Kira, you're right. I have times struggle just to go along with ideas that I knew really could be better or perspectives they didn't look at, but I didn't want to hurt any feelings or rock the boat, so I just kind of laid low. No, it's time out for people being quiet because you don't want to say what needs to be said. That's one reason why God said, bring back the amplified mind. The amplified mind is about amplifying your thinking to think on a higher level, a higher frequency, to look at things differently. And instead of always having to run to God, hear God. Because he's already telling you, he's been talking to you in your thoughts and telling you what to do. All right? So I hope tonight helped you. I hope you really liked what was said. Uh, again, it's called the Amplified Mind. And the mind of a genius was our topic tonight. And I hope something was said tonight that helped you to look at things differently. I welcome problems because I like to sit back and, and, and the genius inside of me figures out what we need to do. We come up with plans. You can't come up with a plan with people who are always crying about, oh my God, what are we going to do? No, when there's a problem, geniuses come together like this like this pandemic geniuses all over the world are coming together but i guarantee that somebody that's given to something as the 10th man saying i hear you but i don't think that's going to work and it makes us look deeper we need people in our lives that won't always agree with us we need people in our mind that will not always be in our corner that will actually hold us to think deeper to go further to say, I hear you, but that's more than you can do with that. To frustrate the mess out of you to the point you want to knock them in the head in the spirit. I ain't saying for real now. 
Because what they're actually doing is they're making you go deep. You know that word when they say the deep, call it to the deep? That means I'm calling as someone deep to the deep inside of you. I don't need any more superficial. I've heard it before. We know that. No, let's go deep. Let's go down in that crevice of your heart and your soul where God has been talking, but you don't want to hear his voice because it's so silent because you're afraid that if I answer, then I'm held accountable to what he tells me. Let's talk. All right. So the amplified mind is back. You're going to get more of this. I'm here to amplify your mind. I'm here to give you a better way to think. And what I'm telling you tonight, God is saying, I give you more than a mind just to think on stupid stuff and crazy stuff. I'm going to teach you how to think so that you can call those things that are not as though they were. And you're going to start seeing things manifest that you never thought could happen because your thinking is on a whole nother level. And I'm going to say this as I close. If you're around people who don't know how to think and don't want to think, hasta la vista, baby. I got to go. I need people around me who are thinkers so that we sit down in a group and I give you a concept and I give you a concept. And here's, a, here, here's, our, idea, here, here's our idea. Now give me your concept of how we can implement it. And, tr and, and let everybody bring to the table their concepts. And then you put together the puzzle from the pieces of the people who are seeing things from a different perspective. You're so welcome, Melvin. So listen, I got to go. I hope you enjoyed this tonight. I hope something was said that make you trust in what you see and what you know. But I feel like you got to go along to get along. That you can simply say, no, I disagree. And these are my reasons. They're legit, whether you like them or not. And it'll make the person go back and look at it again and say, you know what? I never considered what you said. But what you said makes so much sense. Now, thank you for that. People may not thank you now, but they'll thank you later. All right. So until next time, guys, listen, I'll be on Sunday morning for the Way Life Center. I'll be on doing our morning. Our Sunday is Easter, so I'll be on Sunday morning. Join us then. I'd love to have you. If you came on late, as I always like to say, Watch this message in its entirety. Go back, share it. I'm telling you, there's some great gems in this thing. And you're right, we're great minds gathered together, Sabrina. But we're gathered together, iron sharpens iron. And I'm looking for the 10th man who will say, carry the amplified mind was good. But have you considered this? Because what it does is it makes us better. Not bitter, better. All right, so I'm here to amplify your mind. I'm here to expand your conscious thinking on a whole nother level, and you better do everything God called you to do and the freedom that comes with doing it. Wow, what a word, what a word. Do you feel now the genius genes that are running through you? You are so much of a genius, but you have allowed failures of your past to hinder you from moving forward. Well, right now, I want you to feel that inspiration to go next to the next level that God has for you and not to be afraid to be different. Let's pray. God, I do thank you for this message. I thank you for those who have tuned in and now have heard that they are a genius. They have the genius genes running through their blood. And so this morning, God, I pray that you allow them to stand bold, to stand strong, to stand in courage, and to be that genius that you call us to be. For each of us have a destiny and a purpose. And this morning, I speak power into your life to stand assured of who you are and not to be afraid of being different. Father, I thank you for this message. I thank you for your people that have received it. Let us not just be hearers of this word, but also doers of this word. We pray in your son Jesus' name. Amen. We want you to now sow a seed in this ministry. If the Way Life Center has been a blessing to you over the years, and if you're a newcomer to our ministry, if today's message blessed you, we want you to give back. We're going to put up on the screen now where you can sow seeds through PayPal or through Cash App. If you choose to go through PayPal, the link is there right now. And if you choose to go through Cash App, it's the dollar sign, The Way Life Center. And every bit of what you can do to bless us, many of you have been a great blessing over this year. Let's finish out the year strong. We're able to bring great content. We've been able to bring you A1 Ministry. We're able to give you great visuals. It's all by you being a blessing to the ministry and partnering with us. And so right now, if you will, just sow a seed into this ministry. Whatever God lays upon your heart to do, a penny or a million, we are not going to complain. We're going to bless it. And you may say, well, Apostle, I don't have to give. Well, I pray upon your finances right now that God will bless you.
because you had a heart to give. You just didn't have it. And so if you will, so you see right now, and we thank you for tuning in to the Wave Life Center's Sunday morning love stream broadcast. We'll be back next Sunday. Christmas is soon. I may even sing a Christmas tune for you next week. We'll see. Until then, God bless you. Sow those seeds now. If you have a prayer request, please inbox us, and I will touch and agree with you and pray for you and your family. All right? Until next week, God bless you. Sinus is above me as always. But God bless you. We love you much. Take care now. Bye-bye.